Welcome everyone to the ASUS AIoT podcast. Today we have a very special guest with us, Olivier Duizaibo from Quividi. He's the president at Quividi and uh, it's a company that cr creates different innovative solutions in the retail space. So welcome, Olivier. Thank you very much, podcast. Silvia. Yep. Um, today I wanted to get to the, the, the audience to get to know you, but also about your company and your journey. So first, how did this start, right? Did you always know that you wanted to be in tech? And my question comes from the fact that every time I, I listen to your presentations and even when we do these business meetings, you know, I always find that you're so passionate about your solutions that you offer, right? And it, it's rare. Of course, we are all passionate Thanks. about the things we sell, but you're particularly good at that. So, Well, thank you. Um, I've always liked the idea that computers could understand um, humans. And so, indeed, I created a first company in 2000 that was about uh, uh, watching television and generating metadata on the mm. fly. So uh, this was an advertising. This is the uh, anchor man. This is what's going on here. And so putting metadata so that you can navigate through that. Mm -hmm. um, the company went bust. But uh, I, I met along the way uh, great ideas and my future partners. So in mm -hmm. 2006, I created um, Quivity with that vision that um, indeed, if um, a computer with a tiny sensor, mm -hmm. uh, let's think webcam, but uh, a webcam that would not record, but just acquire a signal, if that computer could tell um, if somebody is paying attention to a point of interest, um, that would be super useful to know because that would help um, those who communicate in public places uh, like brands to uh, know if the message gets mm -hmm. across. And so we set on to create the first audience measurement solution based on live computer vision. Mm -hmm. And we've done this from the very beginning. Uh, we were probably um, early pioneers, let's say, because yeah. for 10 years it was difficult to uh, make a business out of it. But yeah. uh, since then, uh, it's really this vision as hold true. Mm -hmm. um, that is that you need to have real time metrics um, that are precise uh, that you can act upon to really create uh, an interactive way of um, uh, communicating a, a message into mm -hmm. a store, a museum, or any place where brands communicate with their customers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very interesting because if you're talking about that time frame, the, the technology for AI wasn't that mature. Right. Well, it, it wasn't called AI, but it was still uh, computer right. vision. But it had to run at the time on very low CPU. So mm -hmm. it's always been our fault eh, to be able to squeeze whatever we do. So the detection yeah. of patterns, the tracking of a time, the uh, classifications, mm -hmm. uh, all these on whatever a computer um, exists. Mm -hmm. Of course, today with the much better computer, we can also do very advanced um, stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, our strength is that we can run most everywhere, actually. Right. Uh, and uh, did you always start with the uh, face? What kind of uh, recognition were you doing at the time? Uh, so we started indeed with the face, mm -hmm. uh, but then we added up quickly on um, the detection of silhouettes, mm -hmm. uh, of counting people, even if they don't pay attention. Yeah. And so um, since uh, 2018, I would say, um, there's been a new class of mm -hmm. um, computer vision um, algorithm called neural networks yeah. that um, uh, make it possible to detect uh, silhouettes at a very far distance or mm -hmm. vehicles and classify those vehicles by type, for instance. Mm -hmm. So we've implemented that, but that's where you need computer vision, obviously. Uh, I mean, um, uh, higher CPU um, yeah. to yes. do that. And uh, I, I know that you had a few years at Microsoft. And yep. so what was your role and how did that help to eventually, you know, do what you're doing now? Yes, for 10 years, I was in charge of um, the consumer product line um, mm -hmm. in uh, Europe and then retail marketing. So selling windows mm -hmm. uh, in the, the FNAC or Media Markt, um, etc. And so um, it was interesting to try to see how people reacted to these advanced uh, products. Uh, but we were lacking at the time some feedback from the field to know, mm -hmm. but does it work? Do people take the product, put it back? Uh, uh, how many of them are there, uh, et cetera? And so mm -hmm. that led to this idea that uh, uh, we should use some sensors from the field to mm -hmm. uh, make it happen. And then that it needed to be at scale because Microsoft thinks big. So we have always wanted to do things that uh, could really deploy uh, largely um, and not just in labs. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And uh, at, at the very beginning, um, in, in the retail vertical, right, you, you saw this transformation, you started early on. 
And where do you see this technology going today, right? And uh, your company as well. So um, indeed, uh, we see more and more um, uh, screens coming with sensors. Mm -hmm. And the one we think that makes sense is the um, video sensor because it can really tell um, a lot in front of the, the, the screen. Mm -hmm. um, that would be the only sensor, by the way. There are also mobile phone detectors, etc., which we don't do, but we work with those companies mm -hmm. that um, provide them. And the, the mixing of the two mm -hmm. will provide um, great insights for um, uh, the companies. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there's a number of use cases that we can go down, what is counting audiences and reporting that mm -hmm. for uh, uh, advertisers. This is how much people really, how many people really saw the, your campaign and what they preferred or not. Mm -hmm. Another aspect is to make the um, um, creation um, piece uh, be reactive to the audience. If nobody watches, you know, no need to do fancy stuff. If somebody approaches, smiles, frowns, mm -hmm. uh, if um, there's a group, then maybe you want to say something different. And, and, and this is really the way that the one to few communication should work. And then there's a third aspect that was also that has emerged over the last two years, which is programmatic. Mm -hmm. In other terms, the ability to um, calculate, to predict what the audience would be and price um, the advertising uh, mm. accordingly. And we do that with the um, key ad tech platforms. Right. So you target, let's say, uh, users, right? End users would be people who are from brands all the way to the retail space owners uh, yes. who rent out the spaces. Um, to to the retailer in a, like a grocery yes. ret retail chain, right? And also the more classic um, uh, digital out of home operators, yeah. you know, those who put screens and find yeah. advertisers. Yes, so we, we serve all this um, industry. Right. Okay. Uh, so in a nutshell, the, the the pain point that you were trying to solve from the very beginning was to be able to measure things that yes. in advertisement were probably fuzzy or not very. Um, you know, easy to put into numbers. Absolutely. For a very long time, the way the advertising was um, priced mm -hmm. was by the number of plays. Right. And people estimated when I play one ad, maybe two persons would see it, three, yeah. but nobody knew. So it was wet finger. Okay. <laughs> so we we brought a certainty to this impression multiplier art, the a fact of saying, well, uh, right now, um, if you play an ad, there will be three persons watching uh, them uh, and probably more this gender than this one because we mm. see trends or because also we can operate in, um, in real time. Mm -hmm. So that's really uh, what computer vision brings. Right. Uh, and in, in terms of the challenge uh, mm -hmm. from this journey, what was the main challenge or main challenges mm -hmm. that you encountered? Well, there have been two. Mm -hmm. One is uh, whenever you do computer vision, even if we can squeeze things you know mm -hmm. you you have to have people that understand that uh, there needs to be uh, a computer a cms um, a video sensor and put it in the right order yeah. it's amazing how often cameras are put upside down you know <laughs> although it's very clearly said but so yeah. we, we need to have people that understand that and so that's why if it can come as an all-in-one solution that would make sense and probably we, we mentioned that again right. the second element um that um we spend a lot of time on these days is uh, privacy. Mm -hmm. From the very beginning, uh, we have been a uh, bit on the privacy by design concept. In other mm -hmm. terms, we would never record any image of a face of a person. We would not try to remember that person. We just mm -hmm. process live images and just count um, um, human faces or human silhouettes. Mm. However, the GDPR introduced um, that legislation and uh, we ended up um, being compatible with it. But a lot of times um, the national uh, uh, data protection agencies have had different interpretations. So we spend some time to explain to each one of them uh, how we respect the framework and uh, how it should be communicated to the end customers. So mm -hmm. that, that takes time also to educate the our uh, customers and partners. Mm, yes, definitely. And, uh, you know, we, since you mentioned the, the fact that it's the end-to-end the -end complete solution is much easier and also scalable, right? Mm -hmm. uh, at, at ASUS, we also believe we have the same let's say, philosophy and that's the, the core of the partner program that uh, the context Absolutely. of that gave birth to our collaboration and also this podcast. Um, the idea is that we win uh, when our partners win as well. We understood from early on that uh, the IoT uh, AI business is not so, you know, still a product they buy it, right? So it's more of a process, long, a long process. And it's it, what we have to do is to engage with the creators of these solutions early on in order to deliver Absolutely. these solutions, right? So 
uh, in the context of this, we are working on a couple of things that we can probably announce to the public. Absolutely. And we're super excited to announce uh, um, as the ISC starts that uh, we are coming to, up uh, with uh, two SKUs, one built around your um, Mac 13 Pro i5, uh, which would be more for the uh, large screens, classic digital out of home, and another one around your Tinkerboard 3N mm -hmm. um, board, which would be more for the retail smaller screens. Uh, so the idea is to bring a solution to these two products, plus a, a tiny video sensor in the box, plus our software built in, mm -hmm. plus some um, free, um, um uh, trial periods for people to very quickly um, um plug and start measuring uh, and we think that will uh, make uh, fasten the adoptions in many uh, cases we see a number of verticals that have been waiting for these and so we're very uh, excited to uh, do this with asus which is this uh, so large uh, international company uh, um, that will make it available worldwide yeah so we're also very excited because it compensates our offering so well you know it, we were very good in hardware, but on, on and we want to be in the space of solutions because that's how, where the world's going. And having a partner like yourself that is so experienced, it's really a plus for us. Um, you know, in terms of your company itself, is there a success case that you're particularly proud of that you would like to share with us? Yes, well, we've measured 30,000 screens worldwide, but probably our longest customer at scale has been um, 7-Eleven in Taiwan. Mm -hmm. uh, for the last 12 years, they, we have measured 6,000 screens in almost as many 6,000 different boutiques. And uh, when you think of it, the con convenience store segment in Asia is a phenomenon. You could do anything, you know, in such a store, yes. uh, uh, of course, buy stuff, take a coffee, uh, uh, buy the tickets and Pay so forth. Taxes. And so, yeah. exactly, <laughs> and, you know, better. <laughs> and um, so 7-Eleven, uh, I mean, is, is visited by half of the Taiwanese population every day. Mm. They have uh, loyalty cards on 80% uh, uh, of the adults, etc. And so uh, they needed a way to uh, communicate on the screens. And yeah. so they implemented our solution uh, early on. Uh, and they use it twofold. Um, one is to indeed uh, deliver uh, readings for their uh, advertisers. Mm -hmm. So many people did see uh, the campaign and because mm -hmm. of the scale, that, that is larger than the TV channel. Yeah. And the other one is also to know uh, how to compose the, um, uh, the programming efficiently. Mm -hmm. And they have a mix of uh, ads from the, uh, the brands, but also their own uh, uh, promotions and editorial, mm -hmm. etc. So they're, they're trying stuff. They also realize that some brands work better when this demographic is prevalent uh, at this moment in the day or in mm -hmm. those stores. So they would push it more here. And that increases the efficiency uh, very clearly. So we're happy to be uh, working with them to now even mine further that um, data set to, mm -hmm. um, you know, do uh, uh, even further optimization down the road. Great. Yeah. So you see, really visibly see a change in the behavior of uh, yes. customers when you play these ads. And yes, if, if you manage to be more specific, mm -hmm. if you know that you're going to talk to a man in his 30s, etc., then the interest level is going to raise. We, we clearly see this. Uh, there's an augmentation mm -hmm. of the attention time, which leads uh, in turn to more sets down the road or more visitation to stores. We, we've right. seen it many, many times. Okay. And so with the real-time computer vision, you, you can make it happen. Okay. Or even just on trends, you can yes. just leverage that. Nice. Uh, so next time I go back to Taiwan, I'll check them out. <laughs> okay. And um, going on a little bit into the more technical side of, of things, um, what is... What is it that makes a Quibi solution so unique and preferable to other offers? Um, well, there are now probably a dozen um, companies that do uh, computer vision, and it's great mm -hmm. to have more than us uh, um, uh, promoting this. Uh, where Quibi probably stands out is the experience with the market. So mm -hmm. we've been doing this for 17 years uh, now, so that means that we've seen it all, the complex cases uh, when you have to manage several screens with one same PC, when you have to have a special firewall, where uh, you have interruptions in the internet. I mean, we, we, manage all this. We also know how to talk to the different uh, stakeholders, yeah. the uh, um, the advertisers, the network operators, the uh, authorities for the privacy, the, mm. the retailers. We know, we explain all that. Mm -hmm. And um, at last, uh, we also have this vision of where um, uh, how to take um, the data we collect to uh, make uh, smart choices. Mm -hmm. uh, like, um, what, are, what are the trends behind the numbers? Um, 
So we are now contrasting mm -hmm. um, these data to benchmarks because we have a, a lot of similar uh, you know, venues that we could provide benchmark data. So we, we tell our customers now you're above, you're below. We are using um, GPT to mm -hmm. generate uh, insights and recommendations. Uh, and part of our future roadmap is also to integrate our data with mm -hmm. the uh, third party uh, data from mobile um, right. uh, location uh, systems like yes. those that tell uh, how often people come, mm -hmm. where do they go next, uh, where do they leave, because we can merge that you know, to now go from the raw audiences that we uh, compute because yes. we don't remember people yeah. uh, towards net audiences, towards attribution, uh, towards new metrics, even mm -hmm. like more like TV style. Mm -hmm. um, so all these is things that we'll be announcing later in the year. Mm. So in terms of where your company is going in the future, integrating uh, mm -hmm. generative AI. Uh, so is is there anything else that you want to well, share? Well, in generative AI, also, of course, mm -hmm. everybody thinks of creating new content. So we, we will not offer a product. Uh, that does that. We, mm -hmm. we will work with those that do yeah. um, by attaching um, an ID um, that lets us know uh, when it played if more people watched it. And so we'll be able to compare the, uh, the hundreds of variations of a content uh, in different places to say, well, eventually this worked better here. And why? Well, maybe because they all share in common the fact that they use this imagery or um, this um, uh, tone or um, this rhythm, etc. And so mm -hmm. we want to basically... And teach the industry how to create good content, pretty much yes. like that exists on, online. Yes. There's still a, a lot of progress to be made on how do you use your, these three to five seconds of encounter yeah. between a message and somebody walking past mm -hmm. to really make your point. And so um, um, that would be really something where Quibity can bring a lot to the agencies and brands and everybody. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's more of the, so it's the analysis, your expertise, basically, your yes. analysis of the way that this communication is mm -hmm. working or not. Absolutely. And at the same time, giving an advice, right, in a yes. more automatic way yes, through absolutely. generative yeah. AI. Okay, great. So the last question is more on a personal take on the future. Okay. So imagine you are the scriptwriter, director of a, a movie that is set mm -hmm. in 2050. So we're um, ahead from now. And uh, what we will, by then, what will have changed in this world? that is different and what do you think that would be like can be related to your work or not but what would it be like um well, let me take the the case of how i think the retail stores uh, okay. will morph mm -hmm. um so these would be places where you still want to go not so much to carry the uh, the goods that you have mm -hmm. purchased because these will be delivered to your doorstep yeah. by drones or what not uh, but more because you want to um, have experience with brands you want to play with um, products you want to taste new products you want to meet uh, other uh, communities either going to the same place or through um, you know digital uh, devices and so I think um, there would be much more cases where the brands would have their own digital signage network within retailers, uh, where they'd be able to present their brand, uh, uh, get people to try stuff, maybe with you know things that you wouldn't have at home, like maybe 3D screens or mm. uh, augmented reality or, or, or that. And people will go there almost on an ex for experiential, uh, you know, purposes to have fun, um, you know, before they um, um, they buy it. And so that means for an industry like ours that instead of having one network of screens in a, in a store, there'd be hundreds. Mm. All these, of course, controlled by the retailer, which want to have the same tone and look yeah. and feel, etc. Uh, but um, I anticipate um, almost a time squareization of mm -hmm. uh, the um, the store within. Uh, some limits, but there will be natively built uh, screens in many places of, uh, of the store, like a, mm -hmm. a tiny department store. If right, you want, like shop in shop at, kind at of concept. Yes, level. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Okay. Well, well, hopefully we will have the opportunity to sit down again. Thanks. Hopefully things happen even before 2050. So sit like down that. again and, and talk and see how much of it has it's become a, a reality. It's a pleasure. Great. So thank you so much, Olivier, for to today. Um, and this is the first, then the end of our podcast. Um, we'll see everyone again soon. Thank Absolutely. You. Thanks. Yeah.